And um, thanks to all of you for being here with us today. Um, I've been spending time collecting feedback from my constituents about what tax reform means to them. I represent a very diverse district in Washington State with industries ranging from a booming high technology sector to life sciences and agriculture. And I can tell you that my constituents are asking for middle class and small business tax relief, not massive unpaid for tax cuts for the wealthiest Americans and large corporations. I heard from a mom who's struggling to pay tuition for three children in college and could use just a little bit of relief. I heard from a small business, a small business owner who's spending $12,000 a year on a CPA to help him navigate the complexities of the current tax code instead of putting that money back into his business. And he's still paying a high tax rate. There are countless stories, we've heard some here today, just like this across my district and across the country, from hardworking people who just want a bit of fairness and simplicity out of tax reform. And we've talked about simplicity, we've talked about certainty, also very important, we've talked about competitiveness. I wanna talk a little bit though more about fairness and true impact. And so I wanna share some data about what happened after the Bush tax cuts. Um, according to a U.S. Census report, medium household income in 2007 was lower than it was in the year 2000. And according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, um, employment and wage and salary growth were lower than in any previous post-World War II expansion. So uh, Mr. Ratner, I wanted to ask you, what should we take away from what happened after the Bush tax cuts? Well, I, I, I certainly did not think the Bush tax cuts were well advised. We had a surplus when President Bush arrived. We effectively squandered it, created deficits, and as you pointed out, with no meaningful positive economic impact. So I think the lesson of all that is not to do it again. And how should that inform us going forward, given um, as we look at tax cuts in particular? Well, that should inform us first and foremost that they should be deficit neutral and that you all, well, you're not, you're not in charge of all spending, obviously, but you need to somehow, with your colleagues, make sure that the total package that ends up going through is deficit neutral using reasonable assumptions. And secondly, while I think there is a benefit in reducing rates generally, we should also, for example, there was a discussion about R&D and the importance of that. We should also look uh, to make, I'm not a fit in favor of huge numbers of gimmicks or overly targeted tax cuts, but we should make sure the tax code is creating the incentives we wanted to create, not just to invest, but to train, to educate, and so on and so forth. Thank you. Um, Mr. Stevens, you said, I think pretty straightforward, more investments equal more jobs in your testimony. Um, in a 2016 New York Times article, entitled Gearing Up for the Cloud, AT&T Tells Its Workers Adapt or Else. It really talks about AT&T shifting its business towards more of a digital and computing tape based business. But there's also a quote in that article that said, executives estimate that eventually AT&T could get by with one third fewer workers, probably due to automation, et cetera. So um, while you, work with your workforce to train for the jobs of the future, if you're also going to have one third less of a workforce due to automation or technology changes, that means that more investments may not mean more jobs or more workers. And um, so I'm concerned about the idea that investment alone is always going to equal new jobs as we talk about the new economy. And I wonder if you'd comment on that. Sure, um, what we are doing at at and is our business is changing. Um, if you're like my children, you don't have a dial tone phone at home, you use your mobile phone. And as happens across the country, we've gone from about 55 million of those dial tone phones down to about 25 million. So business changes. And so the, we need less people to take care of, you know, a 40, 50% loss in that customer base. What we're doing, though, is we're giving those individuals the opportunity to retrain themselves. We use nano degrees. Uh, we have partnered with uh, Georgia Tech University for an online programming at the company's cost to give our employees an opportunity to train themselves in the next generation of products and, and services. And so I just want to, um, so, I understand that retraining, it just still means there are less jobs, and so more investment meaning less jobs, and, and because I'm running out of time, I just think it's important that we have an honest conversation about what technology means for the workforce and where we should be putting resources to make sure that we actually have an economy that really works for everyone. And I'm out of time, and so I just want to yield back, Mr. Chair. 